Hi, I'm Nicholas Longo, and I'm the loan production manager on WeQ's real estate team. And this is the WeQ Real Estate Market Update. On this episode in our Market Snapshot segment, we'll talk about what's happening in the Whatcom and Skagit County housing markets. Then in our Ask the Expert segment, we'll hear from Josh Levin from Carl's Mower and Saw, and he'll talk about lawn maintenance. It's gonna be a great episode. Here we go. It's now spring in Northwest Washington, and with warmer weather comes the prime home buying season. So what's going on in the local housing market? Is it a good time to buy or sell? Let's turn back the clock and take a look at the last couple of years because it's important to explore where we've been so we can identify the contrast of our market today. The environment has changed a lot. Looking back to 2021, interest rates were low, inventory was very limited, and the competition was extremely turbulent. Bidding wars were not the exception, but the rule, and it catapulted prices higher and higher. The limited inventory was compounded by the homeowners who chose not to purchase a new home, but upgrade their existing property and refinancing their homes at extremely low rates. In fact, in a recent report by Goldman Sachs, found that 99% of borrowers have mortgage rates below 6%. Of those, 28% were successful at securing rates at or below 3%. Fast forward to 2022, inflation begins to rise, investor demand and mortgage-backed securities begins to fall, and the Federal Reserve starts to raise short-term interest rates. Although the changes to short-term interest rates do not directly correlate with mortgage rates, the combination of factors moved by many potential home buyers out of the market. In fact, in 2022, we saw the shock of this rapid rise in interest rates greatly impacting the housing markets and slowing growth. Although a national problem, impact in both Skagit and Whatcom counties provided a temporary relief allowing the increase in inventory and marginal decrease in housing prices from their peaks. Okay, well then, now that we've caught you up, I'm gonna hand the mic over to Paul Cover. He's the loan origination supervisor leading the charge in Skagit County, and he's gonna share where the market is today. Well, thanks for that history, Nick. Today, the national average mortgage rate for a 30-year mortgage is just under 7%, according to bankrate.com. However, I encourage you to reach out to a WeQ mortgage loan officer as our rates typically perform below the national average. This large gap between the average rate available today and the rates that many homeowners hold today means that those who don't have to move might not. This obviously doesn't do much for increasing the supply of homes for sale, which exasperates the strained inventory issue. For context, a balanced market is six months supply of housing. In Whatcom County, we have a two to three month supply. In Skagit, the, the supply issue is reduced even further. Current housing supply is lower at this point in the year than we've, had, than we've seen since before 2016. This is the main reason that it's hard to call the current market a buyer's market. We'd probably classify it as a seller's market, but just barely. And how about home prices? Well, that depends on where you're looking. Compared to last year, Home prices in most Whatcom and Skagit County cities are up, but not by much. Much of this has been driven by the interest rate shock and slight increase in inventory as homes stay on the market longer than they have in previous years. The contrast most buyers are experiencing is that historically low rates are no longer available, but housing prices have not significantly adjusted in Western Washington, pricing some of the buyers out of the market and encouraging others to stay in homes rather than move up to the next home. After all, interest rates being one, two, or even 3% higher can significantly impact the monthly payment. However, over time, the higher interest rates will start to feel more normal again. In the grand scheme of things, it's all about whether you can afford the payment, are you tired of having your rent increased at your landlord's whim, does your current house not satisfy your family's needs? Even if you buy and your interest rate seems high now, down the road you'll have the option to refinance if it becomes more favorable. Here's our bottom line. Stay in close touch with your WeQ real estate loan officer so they can help direct both now and in the future. If you're preparing to jump into the purchase market, access the equity in your home, or refinance when the time is right, 
WeQ is here to help all along the way. So reach out to us today and we can sit down with you to help, whatever your mortgage needs may be. Thank you, Paul. That was a lot of great information. Well, that's it for the market update segment. Then we'll come back in our Ask the Expert segment and we'll share with Josh Levine from Carl's Mower and Saw and he'll talk about that lawn maintenance. So, you work with a lender to get a mortgage. You get into your new home and you receive notice that your mortgage company has broken up with you and you'll be sending your payments somewhere else. You deserve a partner who will be there with you every step of the way. At WeQ, we service 100% of our loans. Plus, we're not for profit, so you can rest assured knowing that we'll always have your best interest at heart. All right, we're back. Now we're going to move into a segment called Ask the Expert, where we'll hear from Josh Levine from Carl's Mower and Saw, and he'll talk about lawn maintenance. Hi, this is Josh with Carl's Mower and Saw, and I'm here with Ask the Expert. Congratulations, you just bought a house, you have a lawn, and you need to now take care of it. Today with me here are two basic machines that you're going to need to make your property pop. A string trimmer or a weed eater, as well as a walk behind lawnmower. This is really all you need. Now, if you have five acres, you're gonna go, oh my goodness, how am I gonna mow five acres with a walk behind? Yeah, we'll talk about that later. But here we go. If I'm looking to buy a 21 inch walk behind mower, a couple of things that you should be looking at. Do I go gas or do I go battery? How big is your lawn? Am I gonna be able to mow every week or am I gonna push it? If you're gonna be one of those people who slacks off a little bit and pushes the limits, you're gonna want the power of gas, okay? You also are looking at how long it's gonna to take to mow your lawn. If you're looking to spend more than 40 minutes on your lawn, you're for sure gonna to wanna to go gas. If it's a small, flat, even lawn, a battery machine might be all that you need. Another thing to consider is, do I wanna push the mower or do I want a self-propelled mower? I personally love a self-propelled mower. In the areas where I wanna push, I can freewheel it anywhere I wanna go, but having that assisted drive, especially when I get behind on my lawn, yes, it makes it roll easier across the lawn. Now here is something that many people do not consider when they're looking at a mower, is a clutch. And what that means is when I let go of this handle, the blade stop, the engine stays running. And what a wonderful thing if I'm emptying the bag five or 10 times over the course of my lawn, I'm not having to pull the rope every time. Now, quick maintenance. You bought this mower, now what do I need to do to take care of it? A couple of things. Pay attention to the fuel we're running. Please, please, please try to buy an ethanol-free fuel. There are select stations throughout our area that do sell ethanol-free. There's actually a website called puregas.org that tells you where to buy this good gas. So ethanol-free fuel. Keep up on the maintenance of your air filter. Now, certain times of the year, this air filter is gonna stay perfectly clean, but other times of the year, when you get done mowing and you go like this on your arm and there's dirt all over it because it's a dust cloud and you look like Pigpen from the show Snoopy, your air filter is breathing in all of that stuff. So here's my air filter. I'm gonna take it out, tap it out. Can I see good light through it? If this thing's starting to look pretty nasty, think about putting in a new filter. This is honestly the most important and the most overlooked thing on a lawnmower. People check the oil all the time, great, but keep up on your air filter. One other thing, one other tip. You got done mowing, it was a wet day, this thing is nasty underneath and you wanna clean out underneath so you tip it over. Well, there's one way to tip a lawnmower. Yes, one way to tip a lawnmower. Dipstick down is really what I say on a Honda mower. Other brands are gonna be a little different, but for sure always the air filter up. So I wanna tip it this way. If I tip it the wrong way, I'm gonna get oil in the air filter and in the intake and cause all kinds of problems. And it is fine to, to wipe this out or hose it out. Just make sure when you're hosing it out that you're not focusing on the center area, you're really focusing on the cutter part of the deck. All right, let's hop up. Let's take a look at weed eaters. What do I need to know when I'm looking at a string trimmer? There's several different styles. Again, we have a gas or battery. We also have straight shaft and curved shaft. I see the difference, straight shaft and curved shaft. Traditionally, 
the advantage of a curved shaft is going to come in a price and weight standpoint. But after that, most of the advantages fall away. So price and weight, you're going to be a little less with that. I love the straight shaft trimmer. One is I'm able to reach under stuff. We'll use this as a prop. So here's my deck. This trimmer can reach underneath to trim the weeds that are starting to come out kind of underneath the deck, keep things nice, tightly trimmed. The other is edging. It is a much easier machine to edge with on the side of your flower beds. So straight shaft, easier to reach into places, better power transfer, easier to edge with. Now what do we know on a weed eater? What do we need to know for maintenance and care on a weed eater? Fuel, did I buy a four cycle machine or a two cycle machine? If it's two cycle, remember, always mix your gas. And going back to the fuel, again, ethanol free is the best. One other thing I see happen to weed eaters is sometimes they have so much power that I don't wanna run them at full wide open throttle. And these are made to run at full wide open throttle. So if you're not running them at full wide open throttle, what'll happen is the exhaust, the muffler will actually get plugged up. And this thing can't exhale, we'll say. And all of a sudden it just becomes lethargic and lacking power. So weed eaters, run them hard, run good gas and good oil. There you go, a quick overview of the two tools you really should have if you've recently bought a property and need to take care of your lawn. Okay, so we talked a little bit about a mower and a trimmer, but here is, honestly, my brain started thinking, there is one more must-have tool that you have to have on your property, and it's a leaf blower. You know, it is a product that I use almost every week of the year. My lawnmower, I only use it roughly 36 times a year. My weed eater, 36 times a year. My blower, almost every week. Quick grab go, clean off the back patio, clean off the front steps, blow out the garage. What a beautiful thing. We have them in gas or battery. Nice thing about battery, battery on, grab and go. Nice thing about gas, I can run all day long. Unlimited power supply of sorts. All right, your grass is cut. It's looking beautiful, but I've got to do something to keep this beautiful. I've got to do something to make this lawn the envy, I know we're not supposed to envy, but you know, to make it the envy of the neighborhood, to make it just awesome. So first step is your lawn is gonna need some food. And I know the rain coming down and the soil does a lot, but on top of that, we do need to fertilize this lawn. So personally, I recommend an early spring fertilization somewhere in early March, and then something in the six to eight weeks later as it's really kicking in. And then, so that's gonna be late April, early May. And then something right before that summer heat hits, when you know you're gonna get some moisture coming down from above to wash that in, a, a summer fertilizer will really, really, really help maintain and sustain a green lawn. I see this every year. My neighbor's lawn and my lawn look pretty similar. And then I continue to fertilize and they stop. I'm not talking trash, I'm sorry neighbor. Anyways, they stop fertilizing and their lawn just dies. They put on as much water as I put on, but they don't feed it. So really to give it that summer feed is a key. And then again, as we come out of summer into early fall, to give it another well-balanced fertilizer, something like a triple 16. And then a lot of people are gonna recommend a winterized fertilizer, something to put in in late October to sustain it over winter. So there you go. Fertilizing your lawn is very important. So I'm cutting it, I'm feeding it, and then I need to water it. We do get plenty of rain here in the Pacific Northwest, but as you know, when that rain goes away, it goes away, and these lawns do not hold up to that drought. So water is important, but how and when we water is really something that we need to pay attention to so that we don't do damage to our lawn and so that we get the most out of our water that we're putting down. It's a precious resource, we need to take care of it. Early morning watering is very important. To water in the middle of the day when it's 80 degrees out, so much of that is evaporating, it also can burn your lawn. So really, an early morning watering and something that's a longer, deeper watering. They say one inch of water per week. I honestly think we can cut that down a little bit if we're feeding the lawn at the same time. 
But think about watering in say a half hour, 45 minute session versus a 15 or 20 minute session so that that water has an opportunity to sink in and really promote deep root growth. I run my sprinklers three times a week, two to three times a week, and I run them for about 25 minutes a zone, and that's giving my, me my one inch of water a week and keeps my lawn green. All right, next on lawn care, we're feeding it, we're watering it, we're mowing it, things are looking good, but over time, we're gonna end up with this layer of thatch buildup, this dead grass buildup that starts choking out the turf, that starts choking out the roots and not allowing a fresh, good growth. That's when we look at something called a dethatcher. Most people call them a thatcher. That's totally fine. It's called a dethatcher. It's pulling the thatch, that dead stuff out, that thick matted lawn. It's opening it up so that the roots can get air and water and so that that grass can continue to grow and thrive. Usually you're gonna to wanna to rent one of these. You know, if you wanna buy one from me, that's really cool, but we're talking $2,000 or more for a tool you're gonna to use once a year. So come in and rent one at Carl's Mower and Saw. This will make quick work. If it takes you an hour to mow your lawn with a walk behind mower, it's gonna take you about 50 minutes with a dethatcher to rake through the turf. And I'm gonna tip this, hopefully my gas doesn't spill. I'm gonna tip this so you can see kind of what's underneath. And there's just this row of teeth that swing. And this is spinning at, at a very high RPM. And they're dragging these teeth through just the top of the grass. I'm not trying to get into the dirt, but by doing that, they're pulling up the dead grass. And when you're done, it's going to make a mess. Your lawn will be covered with grass. If you want to see some, some pictures or some uh, videos on dethatching a lawn, check out our Carl's Moore and Saw YouTube channel. Not to be overlooked, is aeration, okay? Dethatching, very important. I do this once a year on my lawn. Aeration, I do twice a year. And what aeration is doing is these guys right here are going up and down at a rapid rate and they're pulling out a plug of this soil and grass. And so we're gonna get about a two to three inch long, say pinky size, maybe a little bigger diameter, chunk of soil and grass. What that does, when I aerate, it opens up the turf to uptake the water that I'm putting down, to uptake the fertilizer that I'm putting down. It promotes root growth. By opening that up, the roots really want to infill. It also reduces runoff, so you don't have a, a water sheeting problem, compaction, all sorts of benefits. Little side note, side story, not to get too long here. My lawn, I've got a chunk of my lawn that's clay. Last year, in July, I could not keep that suck, sucker green at all. All around it's green, could not keep that green. Same water, same fertilizer. I took an aerator, I ran over that section twice. Within a week, that part of the lawn had popped. That is the importance of aeration, of opening up that turf to the air, the water, the food that comes down. So if you wanna be an expert in lawn care, these are the things that you need to do if you care about your lawn. If you don't want to get into this, boy, my lawn looks good and it looks crummy. And it looks good and it looks crummy. By doing these things, it's going to sustain you having a healthy, green, beautiful, vibrant lawn. Bonus tool. You guys may have seen these as you drive around the county. We have over 500 of these cool little tools, not toys, out mowing lawns all over the county. It's the Husqvarna Auto Mower Robot. This is a line that we took on back in 2016 and saw it as an amazing opportunity for growth for people that did not have time to care for their property or did not have the physical uh, health to be able to care for their property. Something that once I put it on my lawn is a pretty hands-off machine and always, always, always keeps my lawn cut and short. These things, we have them in wired, so I'm putting a wire in the ground, as well as now wireless, that I'm actually going out with uh, a, a phone of sorts and an app and dropping pins around the property. In fact, just the other day, so exciting, we put in one of these robots that's gonna maintain 18 acres of turf for a farmer. How cool is that? So this is something, if you're looking to step away from lawn care, maybe you have an allergy, maybe you have time issues, maybe you work out of 
out of this uh, area and you're traveling all week for work, check out a robotic mower. Again, Carl's Mower and Saw, where you come to for all of your power equipment needs. And this is Josh, and I'm glad you could join me for Ask the Expert. Wow, such great information. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. I want to thank you for joining us for the Weeki Real Estate Market Update. We'll see you next time. So, you work with a lender to get a mortgage. You get into your new home and you receive notice that your mortgage company has broken up with you and you'll be sending your payments somewhere else. You deserve a partner who will be there with you every step of the way. At WeQ, we service 100% of our loans. Plus, we're not for profit, so you can rest assured knowing that we'll always have your best interest at heart. 